are at NAB 2012. Uh, we're still at Analog Haven here, who's got all sorts of great stuff. We're uh, talking to strange Gert. stuff, strange stuff, Some weird of this stuff. Some stuff is kind of strange, but <laughs> yeah. you know what? We're really liking it. <laughs> so we got Gert Milstein here, and he's with Tip Top Audio, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about his um, instrument here and modules. Yeah. So, so take it away. You know. We're into analog. Analog is a thing. Analog is a sound. Analog is the sound of the future, by the way. Right. Not digital. <laughs> Don't be wrong. No, I'm just joking. But this year we bring some new stuff. Um, we started with a, a line of the 808 uh, mo drum modules. These are the original circuits of the 808. No samples, no, no bullshit. This is the real thing. And the idea is how to make it sound right because the 808 is a machine which has its own power supplies, its own imperfections, and you need to make those circuits feel they live inside a modular, excuse me, they live inside an 808, but they are actually in a modular, making it sound right. And what we did is uh, we create a lot of extra circuitry on those addition to the circuits that in there to make it feel this way and just work with whatever is in the modular. So it can communicate with about any module and still give you the original sound. So we started with the BD-808, which is the drum module. Uh, it's the kick, has a decay, a tone, a level, the accent, and each module has its own accent. So there's a lot of dynamic added to the voices. We continue with the SD-808, which has the snappy, the tone, and these are all the original things in the 808, same controls. What we did, it was, we extended some of them, but we did it up to the point where we don't change the original sound, the signature sound of the 808. Um, the next in it line... sounds very classically 808-ish, I'll oh give yeah. you that. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, listen to the snare drum, this is like, you know, you hear the... Really snappy, really strong. And one thing we did add is on the output, we allowed the gain to go up to 20 volt pick to pick, which is up to the maximum rails, the power supply. And what we follow is the technique that a lot of producers were using, taking 808s and running them through tubes to add gain and add distortion over the drums. So that is part, now part of the module itself. So if you're, idea, yeah. if you're halfway into the middle, you basically get like the classic 808 sound. But if you start going up, you get far more attack. And whatever's going to follow that sound is going to add distortion and harmonics to it. So you can have a very classic you know, 808 sound, but you can end up with a crazy like electro aggressive shit. It's like it just whatever you want to do, it very much depends on the level. So that's a, that's, a, that's a new form of music, aggressive shit, right? Aggressive shit, yeah. and we do it very aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing we brought this year, and this is probably a, a revolution, is the world's first polyphonic modular synthesizer. And you can see the first module in this line is this guy. It's called the PVCO. It's an eight-core polyphonic voltage control oscillator. And these are analog, don't, don't be mistaken here. These are like, if you can think about in simplicity, it's like having eight of our Z3000 built into here. And what we do is we use a different type of cable to patch between those modules. If you can get closely, you will see that the connectors have eight pins. So there's eight signals running in and out through the modules. Now back in the days, the problem that people had with polyphonic, and in a way what caused this entire industry back then to collapse is was because tuning was the major issue. You have to have your own service guy servicing you all the time, calibrating your instrument again and again. And to solve this problem, what we design is uh, a really high end, a laboratory level frequency counter into the module, which is what is the tool the technician were using to calibrate your oscillators. So now we give it to you as part of the module itself. Wow, so it's constantly calibrating. So it's, it's, it's calibrated, and if you need to do calibration, you do it by yourself. You got the tool. How do we do that? You do it. So right here, you have, you have the frequency counter. OK, it can show you the frequency. Right. And you can call each and every one of the core and just uh, set them up. OK. Very clever. So I'm giving you, I know that today people are more sophisticated back in the days, you know, as far as like being able to hack stuff and deal with stuff and to get a concept of, okay, I need to calibrate my, my instrument. Okay, that's fine, no problem. You can do it. You know, take your time, you take the module, sit with it for like 15 minutes and you got it calibrated. 
I just got one question. When's the digital version coming out? <laughs> it's up there in the process. <laughs> the upper floor. <laughs> no, this sounds great. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure you guys have been listening to this group. It's uh, very fat, very nice, very nice sound. Yeah, what, what we hear right now is basically we took the, um, the square wave out into this breakout module, which converts the signals into a regular jack that can communicate with that kind of stuff. And we take four of the oscillators and we just mix them in the mixer here and into the filter, and that's what it is. And you got your matrix sequence programmer over exactly. here? Exactly, the matrix sequence is playing the sequence, so we got a little bit of luck. I mean, this is all you really need to do a performance. I mean, you could go a long way with this. <laughs> now, this is just the beginning. What we're going to see is a, a filter which has eight cores. We're going to see a VCA with eight cores. And we're going to see a MIDI to CV that basically does the thinking and doing the voice allocation. So you can really stop playing pads on modulars. You can really stop playing polyphonically on a modular. And that takes this whole concept into the next level. Now, is this, is this, uh, this comes as a, a complete kit, or you can set, the, set it up any way you want to? The beautiful thing about Eurorack is that everybody here in the Analog Haven booth makes Eurorack modules. That means that this is a standard, a mechanical standard, and an electrical standard. So you can take modules from the Harvestman, from the Make Noise, from the WMD, and just put them in the tip top case whatever you want. or whatever, mix and match. And that's the beautiful thing about Eurorack. It's like a community more than just, you know, companies trying to like, you know, make product and show off. It's a community of people that are coming with clever idea and design and we're trying to take what Moog started early in the days just to the next level because I think we're all just super passionate about the sound of analog. I would say that is the one truth I've heard here at Analog Game, and they are very passionate about all this. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time out. Awesome. Very thank good you. stuff. Check it out. What uh, your website is? Our website is uh, www.tiptopaudio.com. Tiptopaudio.com. Check it out. This guy's stuff, great stuff.